how large must be the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road if the car is to round the level curve of radius 125 meters at the speed of 25 meters per second. So we start from the picture. I have a car. I will show car from the bottom. I will assume that the car makes right turn. So the center of the circle over which it moves is from the right. In this case, we'll have centripetal acceleration, which is always points to the direction where you have your center of the circle in which, over which of arc you move. Now, we will show all forces acting on the car. What forces will act? We'll have mg, gravity force downward, we'll have normal force upward, and we will have static friction force. Static friction force will be directed towards the center of the circle, and this force will play the role of centripetal force. To see that indeed you have static friction force, let's see at the car from above. You have a car, let's say moving upward to the right, and then you decided to change direction, and you change direction of the first two forward wheels. In this case, you see that this start to rotate in the direction shown by the errors, and car cannot move of the original direction. You will have friction force which will be directed like that. Static friction force. And this static friction force will point to the center over the circle over which car moves. So then, after you figure out that, after you have free body diagram, you have to write second Newton's law. Mass times centripetal acceleration equal net force acting on the car. In our case, net force is sum of all forces, so this is m plus mg plus static friction force. Now, this is the only vector equation you have. To solve this equation, we have to split this vector equation onto the components. So, I will introduce two axes, x axis x, which points to the center of the circle over which car moves, and y axis, which is perpendicular. In this case, you see that for the x cases, you have horizontal x-axis, you have horizontal direction for the centripetal acceleration, which will be positive, so we have ma centripetal equal fs, fs has the same direction, so it's positive as well. For the y-axis, you do not have any acceleration at all, so centripetal acceleration is zero, times mass gives you zero, you have positive n and negative mg, and as usual, whenever you deal with the friction, you have to add equation which connects value of the friction force with value of the normal force. So static friction force is coefficient of the static friction times magnitude of the normal force. Then we have to combine all of these three equations. Plus, we have to use definition of the centripetal acceleration. A centripetal is V squared divided by R, radius of the road. So, let's combine everything. I will put centripetal acceleration and static friction force in the first equation. I will have mass times V square over R equal mu S times N. From the equation for the vertical motion, you see that N is equal to mg. So, then you put instead of N mg, you have M V square over R equal mu S times mg. Then you see that in this particular case you can cancel mass and the expression for the static friction force comes up as v squared divided by radius times gravity acceleration. This formula determines the value of the static friction coefficient. And you just need to plug in numbers here. So your mu s would be equal 25 meters per second squared divided by 125 meters times 9.8 meter per second squared. All units will be cancelled and you will be able to calculate number. We solve the problem completely.